One of the interesting things about Parkinson's disease is that it, there is a very long period of time prior to a diagnosis of the condition. So that individuals will notice maybe something wrong or some difficulty sleeping or having losing their sense of smell, but they don't know exactly what uh, might be wrong with them. So they have these non-specific problems for sometimes years before the diagnosis is made. Once the diagnosis is made, then, um, then the individuals and their families can learn more about the condition and begin um, doing as much as they can about the condition. The uh, Parkinson's disease is related to a loss of a neurotransmitter in the brain and some of the uh, information we do know is that if we look at individuals who are diagnosed um, in about the middle of these charts are the point where individuals are diagnosed. You can see that the amount of physical activity, at least for men, and that the one chart is on men, um, that they have, they have less physical activity way before they have any symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And because of this, many people think that the amount of physical activity that people have early in life um, does influence your risk for Parkinson's disease. So if individuals are very active, then they are less susceptible to, to eventually uh, obtaining the, the disease. And once they're diagnosed, the amount of physical activity just declines very rapidly compared to someone of a similar age. And um, for, the, for the women, the, the uh, association between early life physical activity is not quite as clear, although they show the same changes after diagnosis um, in their physical activity. And this is a problem because the decline in physical activity influences the amount of uh, function and uh, generally uh, increases the problems that they have over time. So we can say that physical activity early in, early in life does decrease the amount, the risk of men uh, uh, eventually developing Parkinson's disease. However, the same relationship is not seen with women. So um, with uh, the treatment of Parkinson's disease, the primary treatment is an anti-Parkinsonian medications, the most common of which is Cinemet, or a combination of the drugs Carbidopa and Levodopa. These are the most common um, drugs given to individuals with Parkinson's disease. A problem that we have is that the medications lose their effectiveness after about five years so that they might be very effective for a short period of time but then the individual begins to experience more functional decline again and these medications also have some serious side effects such as dyskinesias these are movement disorders so that the individual would have um, strange movements of their head and arms and limbs um, and uh, so it's almost the reverse of the bradykinesia where you get an excess of movement. And it's kind of a sad um, side effect of the medications and there are a number of others that uh, individuals have to um, put up with. Um, generally we see that walking or gait and function become impaired regardless of the medications the individual is on and the, the postural instability and impaired writing reflexes increases the susceptibility of the individual for falls. So we worry about the risk for falls and the risk for injuries. Why is it important that we know something about Parkinson's disease? Well, first of all, there are over a million people who have Parkinson's disease in the United States. It is, as I've mentioned, the second most common neurodegenerative disorder, second only to Alzheimer's disease. It's expected to double in the next 10 years, so we're expecting a, a really um, major increase in the number of individuals who have Parkinson's disease, primarily because our, um, our uh, population is aging. Um, so we will see more individuals having this condition. 
Uh, another intervention is a, surg a surgical intervention called deep brain stimulation that does address some of the symptoms, but not all of the symptoms. And there is still no treatment that slows the disease progression. So we still see that the disease will continue to progress as the individual um, ages. Um, and another, in, uh, another uh, important characteristic is that most of these individuals will live 20 to 30 years with the disease. So despite the fact that they have a chronic neurodegenerative disease, they still need a great deal of support and help to help them uh, improve their quality of life during that long period of time.